Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm accompanied by uh, Giga Chad Hansen, aka uh, Carl Hansen, CEO of Absolera. Wanted to give you all a quick update on Absolera and how I'm looking at everything right now. And let's start off really quick by talking about Martin Shkreli, that Wall Street bets degen who went to jail for securities fraud. I don't know a whole lot about him. I do know that he was famous not only for the going to jail, but I guess he he made some good trades back in the day. I don't really care about him, but it was interesting to see. He likes Absolaire, apparently. Now, he made a video. I'll put it down in the link. 95% of it, he doesn't say much, but he pretty much reiterated the same kind of value points that I made on, in terms of valuation of the company right now. So, you know what? With him posting the video, I think I know more about the company than he does. So, <laughs> I figured I'd give a quick update. So, to start, let's go over. Martin reiterates the fact that Absolaire is undervalued. So, I don't know if you guys can all see here what I got up on the screen. I don't think you can. But uh, really quick, I got some numbers pulled up from stockanalysis.com. This is kind of my lazy way of looking at financials. Whenever the 10Q comes out, I like to vet through and verify that all the information is accurate. And then once I do, if I ever need to jump back in and take a quick look at something, I like to hop on here. So really quick, let's talk about the current cash position, market cap, and uh, their burn rate. So as of Q2 2024, Current cash position with uh, cash equivalents and uh, short-term investments comes out to about $670 million. Now, let's take a quick peek at the market cap. I think we're in the ballpark of seven. Okay, we're at about $790 million. So very, very close to cash value um, that the company's trading at. The thing that I think is even more interesting is when we look at book value. So let's take a quick peek at that and see... I'm pretty sure book value is sitting at 0.7 around, and we're at a 0.73 on book value. So, I mean, even if the company was to get liquidated right now, um, they're, you know, the, the assets and everything are still worth more than the current market cap of the company. Now, who cares, right? But with the additional context, it matters to me. So, talking about cash position, they're at a 0.73 price book value, and net cash so we take their cash position minus in or, uh, debt they're sitting at about 598 million dollars in net cash if we take a quick look at their burn rate okay so in the past quarter we lost let's go to quarterly we lost about 30 million dollars so that's about a uh, um, 120 million dollars a year we're losing that gives us about a five-year cash burn runway based on my estimates Andrew Booth, the CEO, CFO of the company, cites saying that he thinks they can go well beyond three years. I calculate five, um, you know, somewhere between three to five. I think Andrew's being a little bit conservative there. Um, so, you know, from a cash standpoint, I think that this company is in a very health, healthy financial state now. Being that it's biotech, obviously, when you're trying to work on a drug, the, the, the discovery to market time frame is supposed to be around 10 years or so. So, you know, a five-year cash burn runway isn't the same with a biotech company as it might be with, like, a tech company like Palantir or something. Um, so, but I, I do like the valuation currently right now. I view it as the market is essentially betting that the company will not be able to generate any significant revenue within the next five years. Now, let's go over molecules in the clinic and talk about ABD 147. So Shkreli uh, in his video was talking about saying that the company has 14 molecules in the clinic. I think that that's a little bit, um, I think he has a misunderstanding here. So he did rightfully correct the fact that two drugs in that clinic stage are, are in the pipeline there listed are COVID drugs. And if you look at their 10Q here, if you go down to the bottom, there's a little asterisk that says expect no further progress. Now that's actually noted on four of these uh, different molecules in the clinic. So in reality, I think we actually have about 10 in the clinic. Two COVID drugs are gone. There is a uh, phase one a drug for Alzheimer's disease that was discontinued, most likely because that is, from my understanding, getting an extremely hard issue to solve. And then there's also a undisclosed drug that was in phase one that says expect no further progress. So we're sitting at about 10 molecules in the clinic. From my understanding, um, there's usually about a 10% success rate with molecules in the clinic. So we got 10 in there. Um, you know, there's hopefully a chance that we can get one of those things to hit. Now, let's move on and talk about ABD-147. That drug was partnered with Abdera Therapeutics, um, and it's in oncology. They're working on trying to help uh, attack cancer targets with this drug. It's a uh, radio pharmaceutical, so they're using a radioisotope 
with this um, molecule. The thing that's interesting about this one, though, is it just got fast track clearance and was design as a designated orphan drug, if I'm describing that right. Um, so basically, it is a very, very niche drug that would probably impact less than 200,000 people in the country. So it gets this orphan drug designation because of how niche it is, you can say. Now that happened in Q3. So that means that we will be seeing any upfront payment that is, um, or milestones, I should say, that would happen as a result would be recognized in the, this next uh, quarterly financial statement. In addition, as I've shared on my uh, channel, Eli Lilly and Absolera expanded a partnership, and it was noted on there that there was an upfront payment on that as well, which has not been recognized yet on any financial statements. So I'm assuming here that come Q3, uh, the 10Q, fingers crossed, I like this valuation right now, so I really don't want to see anything pop, and I'm not saying it will, but currently with their, you know, losing about 30 million a quarter, I have no idea what that upfront payment with Eli Lilly could look like, nor the milestone payment with ABD147, but... All I know is that it will help extend that cash burn rate, at least by a little bit. So I'm still feeling good about the five-year runway that I currently estimate. And we'll see what happens here. Um, going on, you know, I, I, another thing that I saw that I personally felt was bullish was Mr. Hansen here put about $700,000 of his own money on the open market and purchased stock at, I think it was around $2.52 or something. And I always view that, you know, insider buying can only mean one thing. So it's a bullish signal for me. If he likes it at, you know, 257, I mean, or whatever it was at, um, I like it at that price. And I do plan on hopefully scooping up maybe a thousand more shares by the end of the year. And then we'll have to sit tight and kind of reconsider because Absolute, excuse me, Absolute is definitely kind of a, getting up there with my capital allocation. All right, the hiccups are gone. Um, I'm currently down about 55%. We kind of went up, like popped up 18%, which means nothing. We're so small right now, but currently down about 55%. Um, and I'm okay with it. I'm feeling good right now with the fundamentals of the company. I'm enjoying what I'm hearing on these earning calls every single quarter. Quarter, And in addition, the different types of uh, events that Andrew Booth and uh, Carl Hansen will pop and show up to every now and then. Lastly, um, the main thing that is most important to me right now about the future of this company is this current court case going on with Bruker Cellular. Um, Bruker Cellular actually, from my understanding, ended up acquiring Berkeley Lights, which was the company that Absolera got into a court case with over a year ago. It was over their microfluidics technology. I believe it's the 405 patent family, which... Absolera won that case against Berkeley Lights, and now Bruker somehow merged and owns Berkeley, and they're bringing the same case back. The thing has gone back and forth a few times, and the judge says, okay, Berkeley gave, or Bruker gave us enough. Absolera, you got to provide more context. Absolera submits it, and they say, okay, Bruker, you guys got to provide more context. So we've been going back and forth. The deadline for the most recent kind of reiteration of this case was due earlier in August, so... I'm kind of surprised we haven't received an update yet. I think it's been close to a month. I think tw August 21st is when they had to have the response submitted. I check case text almost every morning trying to see if there's any update. I haven't seen anything yet, but my point where I'm going with this is I believe it's very important because I think the microfluidics technology is actually kind of the, the core moat of this business. And not many people talk about it. Everyone looks at this company like it's some big AI company. And yes, they collect a ton of data and they use um, computer vision and machine learning for antibody discovery. But the microfluidics technology is that secret sauce, in my opinion. He is the microfluidics goat. I can't remember the gentleman who he learned under, but I know that he was like the most respected man in the field. If you want to know, I can look it up. Let me know in the comments. But in addition, this gentleman here wrote his entire PhD thesis on microfluidics and has been working on it for well, well over a decade, probably closer to two. So, um, you know, with that being said, I am definitely keeping my eye on this current court case. If they happen to lose it, which I would be surprised at, but if they did, I would have to reconsider, um, you know, how I'm looking at everything. But assuming that they do win this case, I'm feeling really, really great because then they won that case pretty much two times in a row within like a two year span. Something to keep an eye on. Um, kind of wrapping this up. So what I'm looking at right now is I'm just, again, keep my eye on that court case. And I want to keep on monitoring 
ensuring that they're continuing to expand um, the molecules in the clinic. And obviously we wanna try and get one to hit because if one does hit, I think this company will be trading a lot higher than $700 million. Now, you know, it's, it's the gamble you play with biotech. Um, it's obviously a very risky industry. And, you know, the way I look at this is you want to invest money that you're, you can afford to lose. So I sleep at night knowing I'm down 55%. I have other strong positions, obviously Palantir, and then a little bit of new bank sitting there, um, which totally, you know, I can sleep at night. Okay. Absolary can go to zero and it, Really won't make that big of a difference to my portfolio. That being said, I am buying as much as I can right now. And uh, again, I'll try and scoop up another thousand shares within the next couple of months or so here. But uh, that was just a little bit of an update. I don't think I really went over anything completely groundbreaking that we haven't been discussing on my profile. But um, just figured I'd, I'd talk, you know, that DGen Martin Shkreli was talking about today. So I figured I'd give an update on how I view things as well. Um, and yeah, so... Fingers crossed, looking forward to seeing the next quarterly update and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.